Hi, welcome to the Property Show. I'm Jayashree Kurup. I'm editor of MBTV, and I have with me uh, Chairman Kredai Gitambarana. Gitambar, welcome to our show. Thank you. Today we're talking about the 2019, a year which has uh, slowly come out of turmoil, and we're talking about what is what are the prospects for this year. Gitambar, very quickly, what is your view? What is Kredai view? There was a lot of turmoil in this uh, in industry since 2016. There were changes in policy, the changes actually made uh, doing business more compliant, more transparent. So 2019 is a year which will see regulated plain real estate. It will see serious players who are there for the long haul. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, consolidation. Business is being done uh, more transparently. And it's a great year for the apartment buyers also because uh, there is answerability now. There is... Um, you know, uh, for them there are forums, uh, RERA is a big one, to go to and uh, voice their grievances. How have policies impacted you? Policies, all the policies that have come in are good. Unfortunately, time was short, a policy would come in and immediately after 2-3 months another change would come in and another change. For example, GST, you know, uh, to learn how to operate GST from the business side as well as the government side, it takes at least a year, year and a half, maybe two years mm -hmm. to file the returns, to file which return to file, when to file it, how to claim from the customer, how to give input credit back to the customer, how much to give to the customer, how to claim input credit from uh, uh, the vendor that we buy from. Practical uh, doability of the change in policy requires time, which we didn't have. Good changes in policy are welcome. There needs to be more rationalization on all policies that have been announced so that it becomes more practical, more doable because we don't want to cut short supply. Mm -hmm. It will hit the customer because supply cut short means an escalation in prices. I hope that by the end of 2019, all stakeholders will know how to handle the changes that have come over in the last two years. So how does a consumer choose whom he should go with? It's very simple. See the delivery and track record of delivery. And uh, if that is... Uh, uh, I would say satisfactory, then that is the first choice. So there is no doubt that there have been bad deliveries over the last five years. Mm -hmm. There have been non-deliveries over the last five years. The buyers are only going to the people who uh, have delivered in the past, have executed, have kept promises. So they're doing well, they're selling reasonably well. First and foremost, do your homework on who has delivered, how they de delivered, the quality of delivery. Maintenance of the property post-delivery is very important because the asset is huge. And uh, as home users, no home user will be able to manage a project uh, thinking you know, that they'll run it themselves is very ambitious, not doable. What is the way forward for the industry? It's definitely complete struck projects. Going to court is not a good option. Why? Because if you see, most of the projects that are stuck, the developers have not run away from the country. They're still here. And some of them have been put behind bars. Some of them have been put in house arrest. Some of them have been, you know, they're being called time and again by the NCLT and, you know, by whichever forum the customer goes to. So they're there. Why unnecessarily create a situation where the developer, because he's not delivers, delivered, has the excuse to say, I'm sorry, this is sub -judice. In many meetings where JP was called by the government to ask him how is he planning to deliver all his incomplete projects. He said it will take time. I have delayed. He admitted to the fact. But he had that much money and he was going to keep completing these towers one by one, one by one, one by one until some of the buyers went to court. Probably they were frustrated and justified in their frustration because it's taken so much time. They went to court and the Supreme Court asked him to deposit the money in the court. So now the money is deposited in the court and some more money is being asked for. So he says, I don't have any more money because first, if I don't deposit in court, I'll be held for contempt of court. So now I'm not going to look at completion. Let me look at depositing the money in court. I think this whole thing, is, I think more than a year has already gone by. And nobody's feeling better after it because the apartments are still as they were, incomplete. The money is lying in the court as it was. It's not being used. He's not been allowed to sell assets, liquidated assets, to complete this project. So in the end, who's suffering? It's the buyer. There has to be a joint uh, meeting of stakeholders 
to find a solution to complete the project. And post completion, you do what you have to do. You prosecute, you execute, whatever you want to do, you do that. Why is the NCR still slower in finding solutions? The NCR is doing 50% of the country's real estate. Yeah. So you naturally will have 50% of the country's problems in the NCR. In Maharashtra, the volumes are not so big, like you see over here. And the resolutions are much simpler. There has been better a better approach to solve the problem with people over there. Conciliatory? Yes, it's always, always, always conciliatory. That is the solution. In the NCR, because you know there are 35,000 customers or there are 20,000 or 10,000, a consensus amongst 35 or 10,000 disgruntled, uh, upset customers is very difficult to come by. The investor is more interested in getting the A, principal back, Best case scenario is principal plus interest. So his interest is, okay, you know, let me get a refund yeah. with interest. If not that, then let me get a refund of the principal. But the home buyer wants the house. Yeah. For the end user, for the home buyer, the only way to get the house is to have a joint meeting of all stakeholders and come through a reconciliation process and have a ring fences, a fencing of all the available money and execute and complete the project together with the government, with the developer and themselves and the financial institution. So when you have a problem, go to RERA? When RERA started, you see, there is so much of media pressure on everyone to perform. Say the right thing. Now they are realizing that that is not the solution. That you have to first and foremost stop that policy of a refund because there is in most projects, there is juice. There's, juice means unsold inventory. The general consensus is if a project is more than 60% complete, let's stop refunds and try and complete the project in the interest of the actual end user. Sure. Uh, is there enough money to complete the stuck projects? So let's take Noida for example. If somebody got 25 acres of land, possession was given say about 15 acres and 10 acres it wasn't given, but the bill was raised for the 25 acres and the interest was calculated on 25 acres. So what happened was that there was a so-called perception of a default on land payment by the real estate community. Has there not been a default? Has, has the payment been made? So now let's come to land. The bill that was raised to the developer community was for the entire piece. And when you went to get your completion certificate or you went to get a naksha pass or whatever, you require a no-due certificate from the authority. Now, I say that this amount is wrong because you overcharge, you've levied interest on something which I don't have. They say, no, this amount is right. So there's this tussle. So when they say, either you pay what I'm asking you for and we'll debate this later. When now, when we got these progressive officers over here, they said, okay, we understand what you say is right. So let's devise a method wherein we can start doing things for the land you have and we start giving you, you know, fine, we start giving you tower by tower completion or whatever. So you can't say that in every delayed project there was a malified intent mm -hmm. from the developer side. There was a practical problem on ground. There were uh, dues which were really not due and there were, you know, contentious issues thereby. There were Developers who came into this business for the first time who mismanaged the show yeah. because the scale they were doing, they didn't know how to handle it. They're still around. They haven't run away. I say there is still hope for projects which are, you know, delayed or not where construction is stopped. My appeal to customers is to go to Rera and say, okay, we have this body of representatives who can decide on behalf of the entire community of customers. Let's come by to a solution where you get back the developer, let's see the entire cash flows of the project and let's see if it's doable or not. If there is a mismatch of cash flows that more outflow than inflow, then there is a problem which needs a separate solution. What percentage of pro projects will be that in your estimate? So I don't think there would be a very high percentage maybe, but there are some projects which are very uh, voluminous yeah. where this problem may persist, mm -hmm. but most of the smaller developers this problem is not there. It is a problem of unsold inventory. Mm -hmm. And see, it's a very vicious circle, Jashree. If the perception in the market of a particular project is that this is a project, mm -hmm. nobody will buy into that project. Right. Oh, don't go there. Now, the developer may not have a malified intent. It's just that he doesn't have money, the banks are not lending, his existing sales, his existing customers have stopped paying because construction has stopped. So it's like a vicious, it's a circle. Mm -hmm. 
So for such a project, the solution is very simple. Call the buyers who already bought it. Go to Rera and ask for, you know, an escrow, escrow of the assets which are still available. Yeah. And let the sales happen through that escrow. Yeah. Let the collection happen through that escrow. Let the spend happen through that escrow. So that solution is there. It can happen and most of these houses can be done. Uh, UP Rera has started doing that. So there's a lot of uh, projects which are now in court. Mm -hmm. Some are in NCLT. If what I'm suggesting can be done through Rera, yeah. not more than two years. Tops. Are you seeing consolidation? Yes, there's a lot of consolidation happening. They are bringing in uh, developers who've done this, who know how to do this, to take over projects, to take over a land where there's nothing launched yet. Yeah. Will we see a lot of uh, technology infusion now? At the sale prices that we have, technology is not very affordable. Yeah. But having said that, there are a lot of developers who are at least moving to a different form of uh, shuttering, uh, yeah, aluminium shuttering and stuff like that. But not automation. Mm -hmm. That's not possible at this uh, sale price. The price at which apartments are being sold in Noida extension at 3,000, 3,100 rupees is the cost of construction for buildings in Mumbai. So you see that. So are you on zero profit? Of course, and uh, there. So they, that is why negative cash flows. Where did this problem start from? This problem started from people undercutting sale prices, developers themselves, because the uh, urge to sell and to sell fast and to sell in volume was so strong. Who were the ones who made the money? It was the property dealers. It was the broke community, because and investors and investors, so investors because. Those who exited, yes. Yes, yes. But those who said, okay, I bought it this price, I'll sell at that price, they didn't. So, as a developer, we must first, you know, it's pure mathematics. You must at least know how much it's costing you right. and then offer it in the market. Even if you want to sell at a no profit, no loss, no problem. Right. But don't sell at a loss. Because if you sell at a loss, somewhere you are going to be stuck with your project. Right. One last message for the consumer. Things are changing with our community and... Uh, there are uh, people who are more compliant and answerable and who are going to be in this business for the long haul. So when you buy, please do your background checks, see the record, the track record of uh, the developer you're buying with. And for consumers who are stuck in incomplete projects, my advice is don't panic. I know it, it's, it's very, uh, what should I say, very small of me to say that, but that's the f truth, you know, don't panic, get together, Make a committee of uh, some five, six people who are, you know, uh, honest within your uh, circle of customers, who are honest, who have experience, who you can trust. Let them take the lead. Let them call the developer. Go to Rera. That project can be completed. But it has to be done in a very calm, rational, sensible, cool way. Otherwise, you know, you'll be fighting another four or five years in courts and you still won't get your home. So there you are. There are problems and there are solutions. The industry is willing to come forward. There are the industry associations like Credi and Gitambar as the chairman is promising consumers that they're working towards solutions. If you are a stuck consumer, if you're in a stuck project, don't panic. Go back to the RERA authority. That's your first port of call. And work with the developers in a spirit of conciliation so that projects can go through to completion. That's why Magic Bricks runs hashtag complete stuck projects. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Magic Bricks on YouTube and click the bell icon to get new videos.